I'm limited in my time, so if you have your Bibles, let's go to Acts chapter 3. We'll read uh, the first five verses, pray, and you'll be seated, and then I'll continue on with our lesson for tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Say amen if you're there. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. See, it's still the will of God to be a church and for time to pray. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, who they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Purposely, he was placed there. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But he was purposely laid at this amazing gate that has a story all its own. Purposely to beg. He showed up at this spot to beg with an expectation that his needs were going to be met by what he got in this place. Are you with me? To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. I, I, I wanted to just something about the people of God that were just a little more given than the people down the road. Oh, well, are we in church already? I told you there is no more gimme services. We're in the last of the last days. I think every service ought to be coming with expectation and fire. And if you're not there, I admonish you, I encourage you, I implore you, please walk daily with the Lord. Come with expectation. Can we all say it with a little, little less English perfection? I ain't playing. I apologize, Emily. I know you come from the origin of uh, our language, but I tell you what, I ain't playing. It's not the king's English, but y'all get what I'm saying. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. They look like a couple of people I expect something from. And Peter fastening. I wonder if, if Peter was walking in expectation as well. Just let someone come to me needing what God what God gave. Here's a little quick commercial. Hate to use that terminology. We we ought to walk around and change the paradigm of always needing from God, but rather giving to the kingdom of God. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Do you realize the Bible says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Lord, I am but clay, I am but dust. I'm just a regular guy that got put my shoes on one, one shoe at a time, like everybody else in this room. But God, we ask for an impartation of your presence and your power that we could truly be the people of God. Not in word only, but in deed as well. God, that we would truly, with expectation, be your people. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Jesus name. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to speak for just a few moments on the simple subject of a place called expectation. I stopped at verse 5, but let me read into your hearing. Verses 6 through 8. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I like what he did. And he, took, he got his hands involved. And he took them by the right hand and lifted them up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. A lot of times we're asking God to move, but God's already put the ball in our hand and said, no, I moved. It's your turn to move. It's your turn to move. Step out. Step out in faith. faith. It, 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 look, if, if, if there wasn't any doubt, then it wouldn't really be faith. Some of you are asking God to, to do things where there's no faith involved, but faith is what's needed. And he leaping up. You see, the disciples are already getting more than they bargained for. 
I'm pretty sure they'd just be excited to watch him walk. The man leaped. Both sides are getting more than what they bargained for. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And walked and entered with them into the temple. Oh, my God. That not, not only did he walk, but now he's walking with them. See, we got to get past the idea, man, I just want to see him get a touch of God. No, I want to see him not only get a touch, but keep walking with him. I don't want to just see him come to church, but I want to see him stay in church and live for God the rest of their life. The Bible says he's coming back for a church. We still need the church. And entered it with them into the temple, walking, leaping. And you know what he was doing? My God, he was praising God. That ought to be all of us, walking, leaping, and praising God in the house of God. <laughs> the man leaped up, stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple because he expected something. He received something. He got more than alms. See, we got people, all they want is a handout, but what they really need is a hand up. Because now, because of his relationship, he can go and earn his own money. That's what God can do. I said, that's what God can do. Uh huh. Now he can become an alms giver himself. There comes a time of living for God. You need to quit being the borrower and start becoming the lender. You, instead of being the asker, you need to become the giver. You see, as you mature and you live for God, there comes a transitional time. When you're not coming and begging all the time, but you're walking as gold and silver have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. There ought to be a transition in your walk with God that you live in a place called expectation. 90% of saints of God's prayers is give me, give me, give me. But you know you mature when it's use me, use me, use me. Man, I didn't get a whole lot of praise. You get a whole lot of praise. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. He wants something to me. What, did you get something from him? He expects to reap where he sowed. Is this too much on a Wednesday night? Ah, hallelujah. Expectation results in impartation. When the man turned to focus on Peter and John, he was expecting to receive something. How many likes to get more than you? Wow. After the uh, celebration of life service on, 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 on Saturday, some of us went to go get something to eat. And our, our, our waiter was amazing. We were just like, man, look at him hustle. Look at him go. I told Sister Crow that she's going to pay the best to take care of that man. We ought to be that way in all our lives. We ought to be. You know what? I, man, I, I, I want to be able to see someone that goes above and beyond. I want to be a Christian that goes above and beyond. Isn't it funny? I mean, if you're bragging about what you got and you can't brag about what you gave, you missed it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He got way much more than he expected. But the key was he was expecting. Maybe a piece of silver. Maybe a piece of gold, maybe even some food. He believed that there was something coming to him that would improve his situation. Expectation. The word expectation means, according to Webster's, looking forward to, anticipation, a thing looked forward to, the prospect of future success, to await, to watch. Expectation is how we ought to live. Expectation is a place that each and every one of us, as we mature, ought to walk in. Man, I don't know about you, and hopefully after tonight it'll change. We ought to have a, a, an expectation about us every time we come to the house of God. The Bible says we're two or three are gathered. Oh, my God, we got more than that. Anything is possible in here. We all live our lives according to our expectation. We all need to live for God according to his expectation. I believe that this truly affected the disciples, this incident. It's a small incident. It's easy to read through it in the book of Acts, but listen to this. If you go to go another chapter 
in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Listen, listen to what happened. It wasn't just a moment. How many times did some of us get on there? Oh, they, they, well, they, they prayed through, they got the Holy Ghost, and, or they got baptized, and then we don't see them. Look at this. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, where did Peter and John get this boldness? Look at this story. Look what happens. I wonder if this impartation of expectation gave them boldness. Look, if you've lost your boldness in the things of God, why don't you get back to doing the things of God? If you lost your faith in God, why don't you go all in with God? Understand all in according to his context, not our context. Don't throw a dollar and expect a million. You hear what I'm saying? And they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant. Wait a minute. They're bold, but wait a minute. They, 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 their, their history doesn't line up with what they are right now. I like that. Who they were is not who they are. God can do that to you if you let him. God can do that for you if you go all in. Let me tell you one of the biggest problems we have is we hear the word of God. We're around the presence of God, but in our minds we start doubting the things of God. And so we walk around with, with we'll, we'll see in the set of the expectation. Because they noticed, they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. These guys are bold in Jesus. But look at the next sentence if you're there. And beholding the man which was healed standing with him. He was still with him. Oh, that ought, to, that ought to light your fire. That ought to do so. Because it says, and they could say nothing again. You better, you're, you're darn tootin'. You couldn't say nothing against it. They're still living for God. They just seen someone get an expectation of their miracle. Get it. Now they have an expectation. And it generates. And it births more. It becomes fruitful. Those who believe their lives can get better generally make their lives better. I don't care if you got a dusty, dirty floor. There ought to be something about you. I, I, it don't matter what anybody thinks about my house. I mean, I've got a beat up old house. I'm going to have a clean house. Even if I got, a, even if I got an old car, I'm gonna have, my car going to run around. I'm going to change oil on it. It's an understanding of taking care of what's important because it's a mindset. Expectation is a mindset. The Bible says too much is given, much is required. What, what's he say? I'm expecting you to have expectation with what I've given you. He, remember, remember the one, the one guy, the, the guy with the one talent went and buried it. You go look at the words where he said, "God gives you something, you turn around, yes. and you're more about self preservation instead of." having an expectation for God, he cursed him. There ought to be something about us. My God, he's touched me. He's blessed me. I got, an extra, I got more expectation than I've ever had. Those who are stuck are usually stuck in their mindset. Those folks who believe things can change, do so. Even if it's just one day at a time, one little thing. They get up each day with that sense of expectation. Today, I'm going to do better than yesterday. I'm not talking about just this psycho psychology stuff. I'm talking about just something about, you know what, God, you've done your part. Let me do mine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? My, I look around. Oh, my God, I am so blessed. How can I get chintzy with God? Oh, what, my, I might, may not be feeling well, but that don't mean God wasn't good today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. My body's physiology may change as I age, and I may blow a knee out, Sister Carol, but God's still good today. I may realize that, that I'm a little older and I can't do what I used to, but I'm going to do better what I can. Oh, hallelujah. What did you expect from this service tonight? Because you'll get no more than your expectation. Or is it just a ritual that you're here? He was a young psychology student. And he was serving in the army, he decided to test the theory. And after drawing kitchen duty, he was given the job of passing out the small bowls of apricots for dessert to the, to the recruits. So he was at the end of the chow line with these little bowls of canned apricots. And everybody in the military knows what I'm talking about. I remember my dad used to bring these things home. Nobody really likes army apricots. 
<laughs> so he asked the first few soldiers that came by, you don't want any of these apricots, do you? 90% said no. And he realized he was being stuck with all these apricots. So he decided to go with a more positive approach. And as they walked through, he says, you want apricots, don't you? And about half answered, yeah, I'll take some. <laughs> Finally, he tried a, a, a third test. This time he simply asked, one dish or two of apricots? Because he was responsible for the cleaning. Man, I got to, I got to unload these things. And in spite of the fact that the soldiers didn't really like the apricots, 40% took two dishes and 50% took one. And so at the end of it all, I feel 90% of them took apricots instead of what initial started out at. What happened was, that experiment shows us that all too often you get what you expect. Mm -hmm. If he asked them in a way that expressed a negative answer, he got a negative one. If he asked them in a way that expected a pos positive answer, half of them went against their normal response and took the apricots. So however, when he assumed that they would take them and, and instead asked how much they wanted, 90% of them took the apricots. He swung from 90% that didn't take the apricots to 90% that did just by making his expectations known. Be careful when you're at, how are things going? Let me tell you something. Every day's a good day in the Lord. It ain't going just okay. Man, I'm doing fantastic. He brought me out of the miry clay. It may have been five years ago. But it's still just as good today. I'm walking and talking with a living God. I got a Savior that watches me, whether my day's going great, fantastic, or not. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. You get what you expect. I ask it again. What did you expect tonight from service? Let's talk about a better spot or a better place. Peter and John met the lame man at the gate beautiful. It's an interesting story behind the doors of the gate. I won't get too much lost into that because even though I like all that stuff, it may not light your fire like it does a preacher. So Those doors were said to be about 75 feet high, 60 feet wide. And it was made from Corinthian brass overlaid with thick plates of pure gold. And the guy that made them, the story behind them being shipped, to being used, they were so heavy, they had to create a special way to get them on a boat. But when the boat was bringing them, they ran into a storm, and some of the guys on the boat were like feared for their lives, so they pushed one of the doors off the boat. And they went to shift the other one, and Nate, Nate or the guy that made them, jumped on it and said, no, 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 no. Well, they made it to safety with the one door. The story behind the miracle is that other door washed ashore, so they still had both both doors. So you have to understand that these were not only just beautiful doors because of how they look, but the story. Wow. What an amazing story. So anyway, here's this lame guy. And that's where he sat. Right there in front of those 15 steps before those great doors. And it said it took 20 men just to open them. They were so heavy. But that was his spot. That was his place. Now, if you've lived in Arizona for five minutes, you know we got a little panhandling going on around here. Now, I don't advise you do this, but if you pay attention when you're sitting at the light for some of these lights that are just a little too long for my patience, you watch these guys and there's some people that that's their spot. And they ain't just gonna let some of the homeless joker come over there and take their spot. And when you're panhandling for a living, your spot's important. Best spots are hard to come by. This man, obviously, over a course of how many years, had moved his way to the best spot in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You see, he had an expectation, and he wanted to get to a certain spot. He yeah. just didn't sit where he was. He kept moving forward, even if it was in a place of what most of us consider destitution. He's like, look, if I'm, I'm going to be the best destitute person on the planet. Man, I may not have a PhD. I, I, I may have to. I, I, I may have to dig ditches for them, but I'm going to be the best dig, ditch digger there is, and I'm going to find. I'm going to find the best companies to work. It's funny how some of us have that mentality in our work. 
you ain't got no education at all, but God bless you. So, and then you turn around with a mindset, well, I got that for work, but not for the kingdom of God. That's probably what this guy had. That's probably what this guy had. He's got that. He wasn't really thinking about God. He was saying, man, I'm going to get myself. Oh, yeah, watch me. They were probably picking him up from his nice, beautiful home. Just kind of embellishing it here for the sake of us, because we've seen the stories of some of those people panhandling, and they spy on those cameras, and they caught that little lady here in Arizona going and getting her Mercedes after panhandling. Anybody remember that story? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't. Oh, yeah. They, they caught some people making over $100,000 a year panhandling. And I don't really think this guy was that, but anyway, let me get back on this before y'all get all offended and stuff. <laughs> So anyway, this guy had moved his way up the ladder and got himself sitting beside the gate beautiful. He put himself right where faith walked by. He was there where the faithful went into and came out of the house of God. Surely in his understanding, there was no better place to find a little charity. <laughs> Here by this beautiful gate with doors that reflected the beauty of the early morning sun set a man with expectation. It's important. There's a gentleman by the name of Dan Rossi. The article that I read, he was 70 years old. And he's got a tart. And he sells hot dogs. See, when you graduate high school, you can go sell hot dogs. But see, Dan Rossi has the spot right outside the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He sets up every day. At one point, the city, because over the years he's been there, they did everything they could to try to get him off that spot to where they charged him. At one point, they charged him over $640,000 a year to have that spot. Wait a minute. He's selling hot dogs. He paid it. But then he got to searching in the rules and the laws that a, a veteran is allowed to vend without paying. It just pays you to do a little research, folks. So here's this guy, 70 years of age, and he don't miss a day. And they say at least, you know, a number of years ago, he was averaging $2,000 a day, and he didn't miss a day. Holidays, he was working. See, we want every day off, and we wonder why we're poor. And here's this guy selling hot dogs, making over $2,000 a day, 365 days a year. No wonder he had no problem paying the $640,000. Some of y'all need to learn. It, it, it's not always about what you do. It's about your attitude and how you do it. That guy wanted that spot. He fought for that spot. Go read the story. He literally, during the COVID shutdown, slept in one of his carts because he didn't want someone to come and move his cart. And when they got on him for that, he parked his van as close as he could and he slept in his van. Why? Expectation. Yeah. I don't want to lose my spot. Because there's a place called expectation. That's the spot you want to be. It ought to be a place you ought to covet. It ought to be something about you. I want to walk in expectation. I want to live in it. That's the spot to be. I understand. When I'm in expectation, I can get things you can't even believe. I can sell hot dogs outside a museum and make a million dollars a year. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. When there is something that you need, the best place you can be is in the place of expectation. Now understand, expectation is not just for business. Not for just business and selling hot dogs or military men handing out apricots. Expectation ought to be for church people. There was a teacher back in the 60s that was given a, the roster showing the IQ of the test scores of a students in one class. And then she was given the numbers, what she thought was the IQ for another class, but it was actually their locker numbers. She didn't know that one of the lists was wrong. After a year, when it was discovered, the students with the actual high IQ scores had performed better than those with the low ones. And we'd expect that. However, in the second class, the students with higher locker numbers scored significantly higher than those with lower locker numbers. Because you get what you expect. I'm trying to tell somebody here, you know what? 
Don't let somebody else tell you what to expect in God. Why don't you start believing God? I'm not going to let somebody else lack a faith stop my faith. I'm not going to let so You may not think prayer is important, but I think it's important because it's a place of expectation. You may not think church is important. You may be Andrew back in there, but I tell you, when that door's cut, man, let me open them doors up, bless God. Because it's a place called expectation, and you get what you expect. It's a lesson that we've got to learn over time to realize that a lot of times things happen because of our own personal expectation. I know why I can expect from some and not from others. All based on your expectation of God. Why ain't he using me? I'd like to see you just start believing in God again. I'd like to see you get beside yourself so much with expectation of God that you can't be denied being used. You're, so, you're, you're in the word, you're in the prayer room, you're on the floor, you're in the office. My God, they're believing in God. They're in that place called expectation. Let me explain something. It was David that won the day. We can, we can get mad at the young man. Expectation is powerful. David won the day. You know, it's why some folks are able to do things while others fail. Saul had more armor, more experience, more strength, more size, more accolades, and more men than David. But in the end, David won the day, and he had less to work with. Listen, if in 1968 you asked the question, which country will lead the world in watchmaking, for the remainder of the century into the next? The answer was a no-brainer. Anybody remember, some of us that are older? Yep. You don't just write us old people off because we all, we know a little bit. We know some little things still. Switzerland owns 65% of all watchmaking market worldwide. They made 80% of the profits. They were innovative. So we need to thank the Swiss for all the great watchmaking advances in the 20th century. They developed the second hand. Mm -hmm. They developed the self-winding watch. They also developed the waterproof watch. Now that don't mean much to you guys, you young people, you expect that. But I remember the first watch I got that was waterproof. I remember I couldn't wait to take my bath that Sunday night and take it in there. It's still working, Dad. It's still working. I'm sorry if them little things were are pathetic to you. They were big for us. Man, I remember the first time I got that little stand one pro oh yeah. Walking around with my way waterproof. They got a little second hand chicken that it was red. But you fast forward from 68 to 1980, just 12 years. Switzerland only owned 10% of the world's watchmaking market share. Of the 60,000 plus professional watchmakers in Switzerland, 50,000 had been laid off, 80%. What happened? In 1969, a Swiss watchmaker invented something called the quartz watch, which is the battery powered watch that we all kind of grip. How many remembers that little digital watch that came out that made all those ridiculous symbols? It's like you push a button, it went through that entire sequence, made those. How many remembers all the beeps? And I almost pulled up a picture of it just to show you guys. It was it was gray and black. There's no light. Oh boy, it was innovative. It was big time. The problem was is the Swiss looked at it like you young people are thinking about me telling you about it right now. This isn't what the public says. This ain't going to excite anybody. Ah, it's, we, we don't want this. It, it don't feel the same. It, it, it's not making that tick sound. And then, you know what? Nah, there's no gears. It's not. No one's going to want this. Let's just keep making watches with gears and ticks, just the way you've always made them. But during that same 12 year period, Japan. Who at one point at prior to only owned one percent of the market share went to owning over 33 percent 
The page of history are filled with stories like that. Stories of companies and people that miss out of the opportunity of a lifetime because of the lack of expectation. Ah, there's nothing here worth fighting for. There's nothing here worth, why would I give myself to that expectation? Expectation? You take the story of Chester Carlson, who for six years tried to sell his strange new invention. Nobody wanted, who's turned down by every major corporation, equipment corporation in America. Nobody wanted it. And finally, an obscure company from Columbus, Ohio, called Battelle, agreed to provide funding for his dry copying process. Thanks to the success of Carlson's little invention, Battelle would later change its name to the Xerox Corporation. Sometimes you get more than expected but only if you expect something. There ought to be something about us that we, uh, I may not expect everything, but I need to be in a place of expectation every day. I, oh, you hear what I can't? Let me, let me give you a verse that, that hopefully will light up church folks here. It, 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 I want this to infuse you with expectation of what God is doing. In Acts chapter 2, 15, 13, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In other words, listen, I know this was prophesied a long time ago. But it's here. You better have some expectation about what the. Oh, you may think your, all your little business and what this is the most important thing you ever got involved in. It. You better have expectation in here. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it came to pass in the last day, saying, God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your men, young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream, dream. Keep dreaming, old man. Keep looking for visions, young man. And upon my servants and handmaids, I will pour out of those days my spirit. That's the promise of expectation. How about this one? Fellas, just, just be cool. Just hold on. Ladies, don't get too excited. Ephesians 5. Remember, the Lord likens the church to his bride. Anybody ever seen a bride getting ready for her wedding? Pray for the groom because she's spending every dime he got. That's what a bride does. Spare no expense to get ready for the groom. God expects that mentality in the church. It's funny what we're saving for other things. And God said, no, you get ready for this because I'm coming. Look what he says. Husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Listen, not having spot or wrinkle. You can imagine that perfect wet, white wedding dress. Veiled, veiled. It's ironed. It's perfect. Everything. The, all the, they spared no expense. The invitations went out. The food is prepared. It's a big deal. He's likening the church to that, getting ready for that moment when Jesus, there ought to be something about a, not only expectation in our outreach, an expectation in our prayer life, an expectation in seeking the face of God, but expectation. He's coming and I'm going to be ready. I don't want to be caught working on this and working on that. I want him to catch me with that, in the place called expectation of him coming. God's coming for a church. He's coming for his bride without spot and wrinkle, that it should be holy without blemish. This should get us running like, like, around like a, that, 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 that bride. I got to get ready. I got to get ready. The day's coming. Hey, church, that's a message to us to walk in expectation, to come to church in expectation, to live in expectation. I ought to expect that I can make a difference in a lost person's life. I, I ought to walk around with an expectation. I'm going to love the lost. I'm going to love the heart. I don't care. It doesn't matter where I come or if I'm down. If I don't matter. I tell you what I want to be about the Father's business. I have more expectation. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what the stock market does. I don't care what the government does. I, I care what God's. He's coming. And I want to live in expectation of that. Time we start living there. It's time to start showing up to church in expectation, praying in expectation. 
Because you get what you expect. Why are you using them, Pastor? Look at their lives. Look what they're doing. I got excited last night. I don't mean to tell on anybody, but I listened to someone last night. I'd have taken a lap if my knee wouldn't have gave out. And all he was talking about was working in the greeting room. We need to get this and we need to get that. We, my God in heaven, we need an infusion of expectation in everybody in the church. I don't care if you're taking up the offering, doing announcements, preaching a message, or hitting the prayer room. We ought to do with expectation. This is the greatest thing going. This is the most important thing going. I want to do it with expectation. Can you imagine what would happen if every believer that came here came expecting from God? Well, that's not necessary. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things thought. They, what, 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 what? If somehow, some way, I could on purpose, well, he's doing that just because he, well, what's the matter with that? Hold on, I, I, I remember when I first started coming to church. I started understanding some things. I started realizing. I remember walking in and asking Brother Exum, who pastors the church now too, well, how do you get to be able to help clean the bathrooms and stuff? Show up. What time? I'll see you next week then. So I'm there cleaning up. Man shows up for jail ministry. How do you get to be involved in that? You should show up. I showed up. Sadly, some people think ministry is what I hand you. That ministry is what you're willing to do. Look, if you can't preach yourself out of a wet paper bag, that's because you ain't spent time getting yourself ready to preach yourself out of a wet paper bag. I wouldn't let you hear my first message. My God in heaven, six months after I preached it, I realized, ooh, that's bad. But I refused to stay there. I had a better expectation of God. I put myself in that place. God, I want to do it. I'm here to do it. I want to do it. Here I am. Use me. Use me. Listen, listen. Let me. I got to hurry. I know it's Wednesday night. I got to start teaching on Wednesday instead of preaching. It's messing me up. My God, hallelujah. I want to. If I can just get someone to get in that place of expectation, it'll turn this church upside down. Here's a lady. She said in Mark 5, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So you could sum that down in one word, expectation. Because when she did it, it happened. Luke 21. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in two mites. Let me help you here. He knows what you got. And he knows what you give. He knows what he gave you. And he knows what he kept. Listen. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. Jesus knew. He knew. That story didn't light your fire, but let me ask you this. What do you think happened after that? Because I'll be honest with you. I can't wait to see this lady and hear her story in heaven. I can't wait because the Bible talks about the windows being open. When she did that, you what? You think he's, he noticed it. He pointed out the side. You don't think he made sure something happened in her life? You don't think you turn around? My God, we may never know until we get there. What is, but I'm believing God with that expectation caused her life to blow up. Some of you will never know what that's like because you'll never go to that place called expectation. Uh-huh. How about in Luke 19, Zacchaeus, he ran before and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Let me say this. I don't know what crazy thing you need to do. Listen, don't get too dignified. In I, mean, I mean, be respectful. But some of us need to get to that place called crazy faith. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've been told by people, you don't need to do all that. Well, I see where you are now. You know what? If my, my, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go there. I'd rather live in a place called expectation than that place. You ain't got nothing coming. I go, you ain't got nothing. You don't believe God for nothing. 
They all thought he was crazy until they saw the results. All oh, them people try. You ever wonder why Jesus goes home with some people and not others? He's looking for some people willing to do some things that you're too dignified to do. Oh, I don't know about going to the altar. They might think I need God. I gave more money than all of them. But you didn't give more than they gave. God knows. God sees. Can you imagine what would happen in your home and in your life, in our church, if we started seeking God? If every, can you, every one of us showed up seeking God with expectation. He's drawn to it. I just read you verses of people that were obscure people that we never know, but we know them because they went to that place called expectation. They went to the place of seeking God. They went further. Than, let me ask you a question. If God, if we're given the command, if you're asked to go one mile, go two. That's for people in the world. Yeah, he was telling Christians, go the extra mile with them Romans. What would happen if you did that for God? What would happen? Okay, God, I know you're quiet. Let me take this a little further. Oh, man, see, that? See, I know. Man, there it is. There it is. Hold up. Okay. Not everybody's going to get to that place called expectation. You're happy with the accolades you get from humanity. I tell you what, I'm doing it for the applause of one. I may look crazy to you. I may look wild. Oh, he's called to something different. I mean, no, we're all called to a place called expectation. It doesn't matter whether you're going to get there or not. But let me take a verse that we hear a lot lately, but I don't know that we're really, really getting it because I believe we've been given the go-ahead to go to the place called expectation. And I believe the Lord himself dared the people of God to get there. Second Chronicles 7.14, if, See, this is, this is individual. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. Don't look at mom and look at dad. And I'm thankful. It's not all predicated on everybody around me. I'm thankful Zacchaeus was able to stand out and that, that widow was able to stand out. I, I'm, I'm thankful that David stood out. You know what? I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but my God, I want to make sure God sees me. I want to stand out. I, I, I get it. You know, I, I don't have everything you got to work with. I wasn't born with all sorts of talents. I wasn't born with knowing how. I didn't know I was saying I'm not good at much of anything, really. The only thing I found I'm good at is finding that place of expectation with God. I, I don't believe in me. I believe in God. I found those people that got all their faith in themselves are handicapped when it comes to believing in God. Because I don't bring you to the table. My wife said I don't bring you to the table. Well, maybe they play and they sing and they got this and they got money and they got all this talent. My wife, we just show, hey, we're just whatever God wants to use me for. You see, because the anointing is more important than having all the advantages. You don't believe me? Well, we'll get to that in a minute with David and Saul here. So let me finish. If my people, which are called by my name. I have to understand the name matters, folks. A lot of churches, we've got to stick with the name. If my people. Are you ready for this next two words? Shall humble. See, the problem with some of us. We don't want to be humble because we don't think anybody will notice. Think about that. Let that sink in. No one's going to notice I gave like that. No one's going to notice I did that behind the scenes. But you think, God, who are you doing it for then? Shall humble themselves and pray. Young people, start praying now. Start getting that habit now. Start getting it because, man, I tell you, you get older and you get busy. If you haven't... Developed it. Oh, man, it's agony. And seek my face. Praying and seek his face. A lot of people pray, but they don't listen. A lot of people get down in a position of prayer, but they're really not praying. And maybe I'll, I'll preach on the Lord's Prayer and how that actually works and how that really breaks down to help us, but not tonight. And turn from their wicked ways. Can, can you understand? That sounds harsh because we all want to be good, but there are just some ways that are not God's ways. In fact, 
My ways are higher than your ways. But you'll never know that if you won't seek his face and listen because you won't humble yourself to pray. You just have your opinions and you haven't changed in 30 years about anything. That way God's never been able to do anything different with you. How many want God to do something greater than he's ever done before? Even if I got five minutes less to live, God, let's do something greater than I've ever done because I've gotten a greater place with you, God. I've gotten to the place of expectation. Because when we turn from those wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. You need a healing? There's the recipe. Get in that place called expectation. But don't stop there. We don't ever read the next verse, but listen to the, rec the next verse. Because when you've done this, and now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. What place? That place of expectation. That place, I got myself prepared. I got myself right. I got myself humble. It didn't matter what anybody thought, what anybody said, my circumstance, my situation. I humbled myself and I sought the face of God in prayer. Don't sound exciting, but it's the most exciting place to be. Is when you're in that place, I believe God and I expect. Because now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made. Zacchaeus' expectation made the sycamore tree a place of expectation. That lady crawling in the dirt, reaching for that hem, made that dirty ground a place of expectation. David walking in the valley of Elah that had been stagnated and stuck for 40 days caused it to become a place of expectation. I don't know if there's anybody here ready to turn this place into a place of expectation and turn your life into a place of expectation. Are you ready to make your situation a place of expectation? I, I wonder what would happen if you possess Positioned yourself into that place of expectation. Maybe, maybe you placed yourself in that place for a miracle. You could position yourself into a place of expecting a healing, or you could position yourself into a place expecting a blessing. What would happen? What would happen? What would happen if you placed yourself in the place of expecting a brand new start? What would happen if you humbled yourself and placed yourself? expecting peace in, in your home that you've never had before. What would happen if you positioned yourself in a place of expecting a financial blessing so that you'd be used greater than ever before in the kingdom of God? What, what if I moved my mindset from where it is now to a place called expectation? What if I believed again like I did at the start and I lost that and rekindled that? Ephesians 3.20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, listen to this, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, God bases what he does for me on what I ask or think. Go back and read it. What are you asking for? What are you thinking? I, 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 ben, I tell you what, as a man of God, as a preacher, there's time I got to get my head right. I got, oh, wait a minute, oh, hold the phone. Man, if, if you're so arrogant to think that you don't need to find that place, you're in trouble. You, you, you're, you're not, man, in fact, it's not that you, you, it'd be dangerous if God used you. Do I need to repeat that? You see, it's not just some random choice by God. It's not just God up there drawing straws or rolling the dice about our lives. It's not the spin of the wheel of fortune where he sits back and goes, ah, just spin it and we'll do whatever it comes up. He says, no, you, you decide. You decide the level of change that you expect. You decide the level of closeness of your walk with God. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing opportunity. It's amazing and dreadful at the same time because when you place your sand, life in the hands of God, you decide this is going to get better. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of I'm changing everything I've done. I'm changing. I, I, you know what? I, I, I'm going to change the color of the paint in my house. I'm going to change all I can. There are just some things that are not going to stay the same. I made the decision. I'm just, it's not going to be this way anymore. We're getting rid of this. We're getting rid of that. We're just changing the way we do things around here. We're just going to turn it around. We're going to give it back to the hands of God. And I'd rather trust him than the mess and the trouble, the turmoil we've been living in for too long. If you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. So God says, it's my people. 
Because once I determine that I'm not going to remain my same old way, that means I don't have to have my same old troubles. And once I determine that I am going to step into a place of joy and peace, and once I decide that I'm tired of the level where I'm at, and I decide that I'm tired of being at the same plateau spiritually, all this time. And once I decide that I'm tired of going home service after service facing the same situation. Because listen, a new, ser a new sermon ain't going to fix it. Sister Erica, a new song ain't going to change it. A new preacher ain't going to fix your problem. A new building ain't going to fix it. A new location ain't going to fix it. A new spouse ain't going to fix it. But one thing that I know will fix it if you get yourself in a place in God called expectation. Oh, if you get back to that place, hey, husbands, if you'll lead the way and get to that place called expectation, you can see your house start turning around. You can see it start. You start changing your thinking and what's coming out of your mouth. You'll find your wife start following you. Expectation will change your priorities. Expectation will change who you run with. Oh, hear what I'm saying? Expectation will change where you spend your money. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Expectation will unseat the unnecessary things in your life. First Corinthians, we're admonished in 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Some of us got to get over that juvenile stinking thinking that's been keeping us immature in the spirit for so long. It's funny. It's, it's, I said it the other day. It's funny when you get all, a little girl, tiny girl, get all dressed up in a certain way. But it ain't funny when they get older. And it's all funny that, oh, boys will be boys and girls will be girls and all. It ain't funny when you when you're, have the reputation. You're supposed to be a man of honor and you're piddling around like a child. Or a lady of reputation and you're fooling around. I thought as a child, but when I became a man. I put away child. It's just an expectation. It's an expectation for different. It's when, when you get that place of expectation, things about you, things are going to be different. Your, your mindset's going to change. Your heart's going to change. Things are going to change because you're desiring different things. When you need to distance yourself from folks that bring out the person you're trying not to be anymore. Do I need to say that again? You've got to distance yourself. I can't hang around you no more. You're not coming up in this house no more. I, I'm not going to be that person no more. You hang around drug addicts, you'll do drugs. You hang around thieves, you'll start thieves. You hang around liars, you'll lie. You will pick up what your influence is all around you. Get yourself around some good people of God. You be, oh, I don't know, man, their standards are harsh. This is hard. I'm gonna tell you, it's a whole lot better than results than what that's going to give you. Mm-hmm. Because the new life in Christ needs a new mindset. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. That's an expectation. God is a God who imparts to them who expect. God is always challenging us to prove him. In other words, if you'll expect, he will do. Oh, I know some. I lost some of you. You see, listen, when Goliath stepped out in the valley of Elah, I'm pretty sure he really didn't expect an answer. Because if you read the Bible, it'll be going on for 40 days. Let me tell you something. I expect something different every time I come to this pulpit. Now, I don't expect something different from some people, but I do expect something different from other people. Well, I mean, there's some things that happen. Well, that didn't really surprise us. We all been around long. Let's be all. Let's just be honest. We all got family us. Well, remember when they was over last Christmas? They said, it. yeah. That's just so and so. That's just what they do. Well, I didn't expect it. anything from those soldiers of Saul's because he'd been barking at him for 40 days. He didn't expect anything from Saul either. Same guys with the same leader doing the same thing to the challenge all this time. Now, you have to understand something. He may not have been in that situation. Now, if you remember what I preached, I said, everybody has a dilemma to a different severity, but it's all the same dilemma. 
You see, David had the same dilemma when he walked out into his field. Saul wouldn't step out in the field because it was the field of battle, but yet it, he was the leader. David stepped out in the field every day. He got up every morning shepherding the sheep, keeping them safe. How long he had done this for? Only he could remember, but he was stepping out in the field. And every time he stepped out there, yep. In fact, his brothers made a comment, you and your few sheep. You see, if you'll be faithful to little things, God will give you more. But if you're not going to be faithful, you ain't going nowhere. You see, every time David got up to take care of those few sheep, whether his brothers saw it or not, he was getting up every day as a leader. He took his responsibilities with expectancy. What do you mean expectancy? He wasn't waiting for Samuel to come down the road. He was worried that a lion or bear came down the road. Because that's his responsibility, that no matter what enemy came, it's my responsibility. No matter what predator came up in there, these are my sheep, these are my responsibility. These are mine. I don't care who said what, said what, said who. You don't come up in here and mess with my sheep. And every lion and every bear and every other predator that came up there, David dealt with. Anything that reared its head up. That's why God can give you more when you take care of what you've been given. But you start looking, well, it ain't worth even fighting for anymore. He's going to find someone else to fight. David lived prepared, even if it was just a few sheep. David lived in expectation that he could be called upon at any time. And it was this mindset of expectation. He lived in a place called expectation. Here he was, obscure, while no one saw. See, it's okay to be humble and no one see because God sees. You can be a big shot and have all sorts of people stop you on the back, but I'd rather have the approval of God. Yeah. Maybe not no, no, see anything that I know. Why are you taking that little church for? Because he told me. Because he told me to. It may not make sense to you, but it don't need to make sense to anybody. It don't even need to make sense to me. It's what he called me to do. And when you don't simply do what he called you to do, pretty soon he'll find someone to replace you. Go to your job, stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. They'll call, they'll have someone who probably don't have near the experience you do, and they'll give them your job. God expects us to be in a place called expectation. David got up every day in expectation. How do I know this? It's easily seen in the text in 1 Samuel 17, 29. He literally says it. David shows up. He's introduced to Goliath, barking down in the valley. All the men are scared. Saul's doing jack all. And he said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? What's he saying? God, I expect God to help us here. I expect God, every enemy that ever raised up against my, my small flock of sheep, I was the one that had, every time something came, I stood up. You got to understand, every time something goes on in the church, there ought to be some people that expect, they all not in here. Anytime something comes up in your house, every father, I say, oh, not in here. Oh, come on, wives. Get behind that man of God. Let him stand up and get rid of some enemies. David's mindset of expectation did not go well with the folks that had the mindset of no expectation. He didn't get along with them. His brothers ridiculed him. Saul said, you can't do it. They didn't like David. They could not accept the mindset of the person that believes God. Understand, when you believe God, you're not going to be accepted by everybody. Be okay with that. Be okay with those people that are stuck. Be okay with teaching Bible studies when others don't. Be okay being on time for prayer when others don't think about it. Be okay being a child of God when others take it for advantage. Because when you get to that place of expectation, you'll kill giants others are running from. David used three verses to scream the word expectation because he said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. It matters what you do when no one's looking because he's about to rehearse it. There came a lion and a bear and I took, and took a lamb out of the flock and I went out after him because that's what was expected of him. And smote him and I delivered out of his mouth and when he rose against me. Understand, when you start fighting things in the church, for people in the church, it's going to turn around and rise up on you. Again, I taught him, smote him, and slew him. Thy servant, thy servant slew. You see, he's not getting all proud about it. He's humble because it doesn't matter. We just need someone to stand up and do what's expected. 
find a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the sea. I thought about, see, if you should only react to things that affect you, you're like all them soldiers did not. When something comes against church, every man, woman, and child, I would say, I'm not in here. Yeah. Every pun was full of the Holy Ghost. Say, oh, no, not in here. This is a house of God. How, how can we? I heard someone, someone said this the other day. I said, don't, don't you ever let me hear you say it again. Oh, it's not my job. Don't you ever, ever let me hear you say that again around here. You turn around and see something he's done. It's not my, not, what do you mean it's not your job anymore? That's not how you answer that. That's not how you do that. Oh, well, let me, hold on. Let me help you with that or let me get you to who can. What do you mean walking away when there's something he's, where do you? You missed it. Saul and the soldiers were standing in the valley of doubt. And David was standing in the place of expectation. Because life is all about expectation. Let's stand. Don't, don't, don't relegate David's story to that of a Sunday school child story. You need to understand what's going on in this world today. You need to understand what the church faces today. I come to the pulpit tonight to call us, Souls Harbor Church, to a place called expectation. The Bible declares God is returning for his bride, his church. Remember the story of the five wise and the five foolish. You better be on fire, and you can't be on fire without the oil. That's the representative of the Holy Ghost. You better be full of the Holy Ghost to be on fire. Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We ought to. Make this church so strong in faith, so strong in expectation. We ought to be busy filling up this church because is there not a cause? And in order to have that mindset, you've got to live in expectation every day. It's time for each and every one of us to take the challenge that I presented to you. Let's move up. Let's step up. It's, let's turn this thing around. It's time to, to take up residency in a better spot today. I'm moving out of complacency and I'm moving to expectancy. I'm moving out of indifference to a place I want to make a difference. I believe God has some miraculous things just around the corner of a place called expectancy. God wants to move in this place. I started this message tonight with a lame man. I want to point out one more time. Remember that lame guy? He got more than he expected. But that only happened because he was expecting something. Oh, pastor, I've already been praying. Oh, pastor, I've been coming a long time. Oh, pastor, I've been doing this. Been there, heard that, seen that, felt it. And Elisha said to his servant, go up, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. The Bible said he'd repeated that seven times. The seventh time he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. <sighs> that ain't enough. It is when you live in a place called expectancy. It is when you're full of the Holy Ghost that instills a mindset of expectancy. Because he goes and he turns around and he says, Go up, Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down. There's going to be so much rain that'll stop you if you don't. What's he saying? He's in a place of expectancy. There's fixing to be a lot of rain because he kept praying. Even when it didn't look like it, even when it didn't feel like it, even when there wasn't any evidence, even when he couldn't see any results. He kept praying. He kept expecting. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it is another qualification of an elder. Elders, by it, elders obtained a good report. My God, I got no choice. I better live in expectation. I better live in a place of that. If I'm going to be an elder, I better live on fire and expecting from God today.